to be my bad guy. Because like, pirates are the worst of the bad guys in the entire world. They give you complete liberty to do whatever you want with them. They're driven just by all the worst impulses of humanity. There's no, there's no rules. You, you choose a monster, you've got a, a vampire, for example. They can't go out in the day. They're afraid of garlic. The holy water's going to, you know, going to annoy them. Pirates have none of that. They can go anywhere. They can do anything. And they'll do it just because it's bad. It's, they just, they're the worst. They're delivered every Friday night by a parrot. <laughs> you know, I don't come to anything with a formed idea. I think it's a bit of a myth about writing a book that you have to have this big idea. What I try and do is I try and take a situation that is somewhat ridiculous and continue to make it more and more ridiculous and then try and get out of it. And I mean, the process of doing that, which is you know, an incremental sort of hard working process, comes up with the most ridiculous of ideas and you don't have to have a fully formed idea before you launch out. But a parrot does deliver them every so often. Ooh, favourite character. I, I, mean, I like a lot of them, but uh, if I had to have a favourite, I, I quite like uh, Stitches, the eagle, because he's... You can tell he wants to be good, and yet his very reason for being is to just do what he's told, and, and eagles by nature end up working for the worst of people. So I think that there's a, there's a wonderful conflict between someone who wants to be nice and yet through the, their very nature can't be. So, eagle. If we're going to go for literary pirates, I mean, McStockbeard's an unreformed kind of pirate. He's a bad guy pirate, so he's not going to go for, for, for one of these sort of more modern uh, nice parts. So I mean, a Captain Hook type thing by uh, in the Pin Pan novels, he, they, they'd get on. I mean, they wouldn't get on, but they'd respect each other. But my favourite part, and one that's really worth looking up, is in fact a uh, it's a female part. She's called Ching Shi. She was a Chinese part, and, and she would be the uh, the ideal part from Mustafa. She was around in the 1800s, early 1800s. Was in charge of about 30 to 40 thousand pirates, 300 pirate boats. It was so powerful that the Chinese government the Chinese emperor at the time, the Qing Dynasty, was forced to give her a pardon just so she disbanded a pirate crew. So she actually retired, which is quite rare for pirates as well. So Qing Shi, she's my favourite. Can we tell them something? Yeah, we can tell you about the second book. So in the second book, much the same as the, uh, the first one, yet completely different. Uh, in so much as uh, some of your favourite characters are back, obviously Pirate Mix not bits back, Emily and William are still running around trying to save their parents. This time in space with added slug monsters, uh, fire breathing dragons, and a couple of year old favourite characters back again. That's it? Yeah, that's it. We've got a formula for working out pirate names actually. So this is my formula. So you take something that's good about yourself, as some sort of character trait, and you put it with the physical thing that's bad about yourself. So it's Dashing McSnotbeard. He likes to think of himself as Dashing, but in fact he's quite a disgusting pirate. So based on that, I figure Chatty McPigsty, the Pirate King Chatty McPigsty, that'd probably be about right. And as for a pirate ship, that's gonna reflect what you like to do in life. So I'd probably call it the Idle Lunch, perhaps. The, the lazy layabout? I don't, I'm not sure. Well, it's got to be. Arr!